What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another Hasbro Star Wars, the Vintage Collection Market Update. Before I begin any further, I need to say thank you to my latest Patreon supporter, Chris Bile. I hope I'm pr pronouncing your name right. Thank you so much for becoming a Patreon supporter. It really means a lot. My entire Patreon team allows this channel to happen. And for those interested in supporting the channel, my Patreon is patreon.com slash actionfiguregrader. We've got a number of really nice vintage collection items that have sold here recently. Everything from older releases to mint and sealed box vehicles. So let's dig right in. First of all, we've got where it all started, Dengar VC01. And as we know that there's going to be a new one coming out here soon, but this is still, in my opinion, one of the definitive sculpts from the vintage collection. It's just such a fantastic figure. If you want to see a first shot prototype of this figure, check out bossbounty.com, Boss Bounty's channel. I'm sure he's on bossbounty.com as well, but he's got one of these unpainted first shot prototype and it is a graded, UKG graded example. So go check that one out. That's, that's a great one to have and kind of a nice piece of collecting history. This is one I still don't have in my collection. As you guys know, I've been on a massive vintage Dengar run. I've got three mint on card Kenner Dengars here recently. I would love to get one of these to kind of coincide with the vintage Kenner stuff, but this was a beautiful card back. I personally have never seen one of these unpunched. I'm sure there's one out there, but I don't have one and I've never seen one, but uh, this one's got the free rocket firing Boba Fett offer. And look at that amazing card back. It's been nice and kind of cleaned up versus the original vintage Kenner card back, but I absolutely love this figure. This one sold for $110.99. It looked to be a really nice clean card. This is the U.S. card back, as you can see here. A couple of little minor scratches and wear and tear, but overall a, a very, very clean example, and I think that price is great. I, I would have paid that too. Uh, here's one that surprised me on the upper end. This is VC08 Darth Vader on the Revenge of the Jedi card back. This is the retail release since it has the Boba Fett prototype armor offer as well as the paperwork inside. This one had a little bit of creasing there as you can see on the upper left. A uh, little bit of creasing in the upper right as well. And here's the back of the card. This is the US card back. But you know pretty heavy wear really. This is probably at best an 80 and it's still sold for 139 US dollars or 180 Canadian plus shipping. So that's close to about $200 or excuse me not $200, $160. But that seems a little high to me. I think that if you were patient, you could probably find a cleaner example for about the same price. But that's just my personal opinion. A couple of General Grievances here uh, sold. This is VC-17, the retail release, punched with the free Boba Fett offer. Uh, the pictures are a little bit kind of blurry, but you can, kind of def you can definitely see some wear to the card back. Uh, there it is. And this is the U.S. release. That one stole, sold for $94 plus $6 shipping, so about 100 bucks. And then this one was an unpunched example. It had a price, five below price sticker. Whoever got that for five bucks, that was a good deal for back in the day. Um, but, you know, a little bit of wave to the card back. You can see some, some wear down here in the lower right-hand corner on the back of the card. Uh, a little bit of edge wear. So th clearly this was at retail, just got binged up a little bit. That one sold for $130 plus $16 shipping. So someone was willing to pay a little bit more this is probably in better shape than the last example we just sold you, but it is unpunched, which is nice. But uh, 100 and, let's call it 146 bucks. Now, a more clean example of the unpunched retail release Grievous would probably set you back closer to 200. So that that price for this one, given the defects, is probably right in line with market. Uh, here is the Ultimate Galactic Hunt <coughs> foil card back for MagnaGuard. This one, again, as we know, has the free rocket firing FET offer, but this is a great card back. I, I love the way that one looks. Just great colors to the Vibro staff there or Force Pike or whatever it is. Uh, Close-ups here of the card. Pretty clean example overall though, just a little bit of edge wear to it. That one sold for $99 on one bid plus another $10 shipping. So that one sold on March 13th, or excuse me, May 13th. Here was a Revenge of the Jedi Rebel Commando, the black version. This is again the retail release and um, it has the Boba Fett offer, and it was punched. A little bit of edge wear, but nothing major, and that one sold for $139 plus $10 shipping. So this is one that's kind of creeping up just a little bit in price. We've noted a couple examples now that have sold for between $125 and $140, so that gives you a little price point to aim for in case you're looking for that one. 
I thought this was a pretty good deal. This is the VCP03 rocket firing Boba Fett that we just talked about that's on the card back as a mail away. This is still sealed in the original shipper box. And the box looked to be in great condition. Just one little very, very minor ding right here on the box. But $238.50 free shipping was a great price, I think. I mean, we've, we've documented a number of AFA U90 examples or U9.0 examples that have sold for $500 plus. So to get one still sealed in the factory shipper box for $238.50, I think is a great deal. I mean, you don't know what the packing job was like at Hasbro when they were putting this one in. So it could be bent up or whatever, but um, I think I'd take that risk as well if I was looking for this one. That's, that seems like a pretty fair price. Uh, here's one I've got at grading. This is VC20, I believe. Is that right? No, VC40, excuse me. Unpunched R5D4. Now, the sculpt on this one, admittedly, is a little bit out of date. It just looks a little Power of the Force 2-ish. But it's such an iconic card back, and it was a clean, unpunched card. There's only two photos, so you don't really know what you're getting. It looks like maybe just the barest minimum of edge wear. Uh, the, the edge wear down here in the lower right-hand corner on the back of the card back near the proofs of purchase, you can see some some white there so it's got a little bit of edge wear but probably like an 85 maybe an 85 plus condition that one sold for 75 bucks i think that's a pretty good deal I, I paid a little bit more for my us card vc40 but mine was so clean i mean it is just mint as mint can be i would be shocked if it doesn't at least get a 90 at, at the graders it's just a really clean example and uh so that's that's a pretty good deal i feel like for for an unpunched R5-D4. I feel like R5-D4 in general is moving up in price, especially the vintage Kenner items. Wow, they are really jumping. I've got a couple of mint-on-card R5-D4 vintage Kenner that sold here recently that we'll document in a, a video later this week, along with some loose graded, or excuse me, loose figures, as well as a loose red bar R5 that was really beat up that sold for big money. So we'll take a look at that later this week. Here's one of my favorites in the vintage collection, VC-44. Nice, clean, unpunched card. Now, as you guys are aware, the, the Luke Skywalker Dagobah Landing can come with two different Saber variations. This is the dark blue Saber. There's also a, a clear Saber version. But this one was a nice, clean card. Just the barest amount of edge wear to the bottom of the card back. That one sold for $189.97 on free shipping. That's in line. That's kind of in line with market. You might, if you get lucky in an auction, you might be able to pick this up for $150 or so. I've seen a couple that have even sold in the 140s, but 190 for an unpunched one, it's 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 a pretty fair price in my mind. Anywhere kind of in that 150 to 200 range is, is a good target to aim for if you're still looking for this one. And I'm really glad that Boss Bounty talked me into this one. He said, hey, if you're going to start collecting the vintage collection, this is one you got to have. And I agree. It's just such an awesome, iconic card back and uh, looks really nice. Here was a, a cool one. Uh, this is the, one of the tougher ones to find over here on the U.S. side. And that is the Red Bandana Kithaba Skiff Guard. It's got the red bandana. Obviously, there's a brown slash grayish color to, to the bandana as well. That one is more common over here. I've got that one with a uh, vendor, vendor sample prototype tag on the back of the card back that I picked up last year and again this one has the darth maul offer sticker just like mine does this one was punched but it does have that highly coveted red bandana it just seems like it's difficult to find that one over here and it uh it's it's it looked pretty clean based on the photos that one sold for it was listed for 215 the best offer that was accepted was 195 free shipping so uh at least over here in the u.s we've got to pay quite a bit of money to get this one uh, mint on card with that red bandana I thought this was a great deal. I, I can't remember if it was Matthew C. or Eric B. that picked this one up. I believe it was Matthew C., who's a good friend of the channel. And uh, he, he he spotted this one and let me know that he picked this one up. This is an unpunched VC-98 Grand Moff Tarkin, and it looks super clean, 85 plus to 90 condition. And uh, he picked that one up for $152.50 in an auction, six bids, plus $12 shipping. I think that's a great price. I mean, we've documented a couple on the channel that – have gone for over 200. I think at the very peak of the market conditions for the vintage collection, which was kind of early fall of last year, September, October is kind of where vintage collection prices peaked. And they've kind of been trickling back down since then. They've been kind of flat over the last three months, three to five months, in my opinion. They haven't really seen anything too crazy in terms of price points, with the exception of one that we're going to document here in just one second. But 
I think Matthew picked up a great deal on this one. That's a, that's a pretty fair price for VC98 Unpunched. Here was a really nice one that was over in the UK. This is the UK card for Nikto Skiff Guard. It was unpunched, and as you can see, it's got the stickers on the front there that cover up a number of, you know, the U.S. card kind of language. And then it also has this sticker on the back. I still have yet to get a vintage collection figure with this Euro sticker on the back. I really want to get just one. I, I don't I don't even care which one it is, but I want a really clean example of this. I, I think my favorite that I'd love to get is VC-113, the Rebel uh, the Expanded Universe Rebel Trooper, or Republic Trooper, excuse me. Uh, I'd love to get that one on this card back. I think it's just such a cool sticker, and I, I, I like it a lot. I, I don't know why. I just, I think it's 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 all about what you don't have, right? And here in the U.S., we don't get these come up, at least on this side of the pond, without having to pay the global shipping program. As you can see, this one was $60 with the GSP. But this one was listed for 130 British pounds, and it sold for 120 British pounds, which equates to about 145 U.S. dollars. But I think that's a pretty fair price, given that we've seen a number of unpunched Nick Toe on the U.S. card back without these stickers sell over here for about the same price, maybe a little lower, maybe 120 or so. Uh, but I think that's a, a great pickup there. Next up was a beautiful Shea Vizsla unpunched with the Darth Maul sticker. And I think this one is coming back down in price. And this one sold for $258.29 on free shipping. And this is one that, you know, again, back during the peak of last fall, 2021 prices, this was going very regularly ungraded for $300 plus. And then we saw a few that sold for $350 to $400 graded in high grade. But this one, I think, is a good deal given that we know it's coming back out uh, as a re-release later this fall. And uh, I think that's a great pickup, whoever got that one. So pretty pretty fair price there. Now, as I alluded to earlier, this is this one was a shocker. This one was a big price point. VC-102, the original Ahsoka Tano, as we know, it's kind of hit retail now or uh, hit, hitting collector's hands with the reissue. But this was a gorgeous, unpunched U.S. card back, and it sold for $700. That's a good, solid double where the price floor has been. The price floor for the original issue of Ahsoka has been kind of in that $350 range, maybe $300 at the very, very low end. This one sold for double that, double that. So that just shows you that. Uh, there's still some collectors willing to pay big, big money for the original issue, Unpunched Ahsoka. This is the U.S. card back again, but it looked very, very clean on the limited photos that we've seen here. It's tough to tell exactly, just given that it's still in the clamshell, but $700 took that one home. So that was a big, big shocker and probably the biggest surprise of all these. Now, here's one I wanted to point out, and you got to be really careful when you're buying these. But this is one that we've talked about in the past here recently, or past recent videos, VC-112. The Sand Trooper. Now, it's listed as unpunched, but I can tell you that it's not. As you can tell there, it looks like that punch has been added back in by this seller. Very, very sneaky. This is no, There's no way this is unpunched. You can see a little gap right here, and it doesn't align perfectly. It's not flush with the punch hole. So this is not unpunched. I guarantee you that whoever bought this is going to get this and see that this punch is no longer connected. Or if it is connected, it's only connected partially. It's not an unpunched card, in my opinion. It's still sold for $205 on 32 bids on May 14th. And again, this is the dirty version, the filthy sand trooper with the sand apps to the white armor. But uh, I, I would just be really careful. You gotta zoom in on these photos, but that one, to me anyway, does not look like it's unpunched. It looks like that little punch has been added back in by that seller. So be very careful about what you buy. Luke Skywalker Crate, another one we've documented several times here recently. This one is VC-146 on the Last Jedi card back. And uh, this one was listed for $100 US dollars, and the sales price was $89. That's exactly in line with market for a clean example of VC-146. It looked really clean overall, just some minor edge wear. But, uh, you know, that, that's one that's kind of 85 to 110 is kind of the going rate for Luke Skywalker Crate. Another one that we've also talked about here recently is the Imperial Assault Tank Commander on the Rogue One card back. It's got the multi-language name pill. Very cool item. I, I really want to get this one. I think I've, I'm hoping, I keep hoping that the price comes back down even further because this one got up to about 150 US dollars. And it's been kind of slowly creeping back down. If, if, if it, if, maybe that's my perception and I'm wrong, but this one was a nice clean example. The seller included lots of nice photos. 
It sold for 75 pounds on six bids, and that equates to $91.65 US. That's a pretty good deal. 85 to 90, 95 has kind of been the going rate lately after hitting that peak of about 150. I think I even, if memory serves, a couple of them even approached 185 bucks. So that's that's a pretty fair deal and seems to kind of be about 50% off the peaks for that Imperial Assault Tank Commander. Uh, here's another one that sold. Again, this is over in the U.S., so that just shows you that there's still demand, at least over here. That one sold for $140 plus $11 shipping. So that just shows you the difference. You know, over in the U.K., I guess it's a lot more plentiful. But over here in the U.S., we just did not get many of these. And uh, this one sold for $151 after shipping versus $91 plus shipping over there. Let's say it's 10 bucks if you're a U.K. buyer. So you get it for about 111 bucks or so versus you know, 150 over here. So there's definitely a premium to be paid by U.S. collectors for this Imperial Assault Tank Commander. And let's finish it off with a few mint and sealed box vehicles. This is the Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. The box looked fairly clean overall, just the barest amount of edge wear. It's got a little ding in the upper left-hand corner and uh, maybe just a slight ding in the upper right-hand corner, but a nice clean box overall. Mint and seal box that sold for $125 plus $16 shipping. And a couple of other expensive vehicles did sell. This is the Toys R Us exclusive 2012 version of the Millennium Falcon. Mint and seal box that sold for $680 US dollars plus $150 shipping. That is big boy money if I've ever seen it. And uh, you can see here, it even had quite a bit of wear to it in the in the lower left hand corner. But because it was mint and sealed box, somebody was willing to pay it despite the flaws to that box. That's that's a big, big number given the, fl the flaws there. And I believe it's the same seller. Is that right? Yeah, the same seller also had the AT-AT Walker, the 2010 Toys R Us exclusive. And this one looked to be in pretty good shape overall. Not a lot of great photos, but uh, it looked pretty clean. And that one sold for $610 plus another $150 shipping. So big, big money on those Toys R Us exclusive vehicles from 2010 and 2012. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. Thank you so much to all my existing subscribers as well as my entire Patreon team. And I'll be back soon with another video soon.